Hello there, I'm Dr. Curtis Finch, the superintendent of Deer Valley Unified School District. Welcome to an all new episode of The Soup Scoop, as we take you behind the scenes of DVUSD. November 11th is Veterans Day, and in the days leading up to the 11th, many DVUSD schools will participate in ceremonies honoring our nation's military veterans. On this episode of The Soup Scoop, we wanted to honor several military veterans who are our own DVUSD family members. And we want to get to know more about their service, not only to our country, but their service to the students and families of DVUSD. We'll hear from veterans from all walks of life, a plant foreman, a principal, junior ROTC instructors, even a school board member. What got them into the military, how they transitioned from military life to public education service, and what advice would they give to students considering a military career. It's all coming up after this 30 second break. Research shows that when parents and other caring adults are involved, students achieve more. That's why DVUSD is committed to reaching out and involving parents and the community through volunteering. Volunteering focuses on welcoming all families into the school community, communicating effectively, supporting student success, speaking up for every child, sharing power, and collaborating with the community. For more information on volunteering at DVUSD, including links to school parent organizations, visit dvusd.org slash volunteer. Welcome back to The Soup Scoop. I'm Dr. Curtis Finch. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the pomp and circumstance of the holidays, and you can miss the true meaning of the celebration. With Veterans Day approaching, we wanted to honor several military veterans who work for the district. We also wanted to get to know them better you'll hear from five veterans who continue to do public service not in the military but in public education. And we'll see how they got started to how they made that positive change to teach our students and leading our teachers and staff. We'll start in the most appropriate branch of the armed services for the state of Arizona, the U.S. Navy. We have two Navy veterans who grew up in Arizona and who now work together at Inspiration Mountain School, Dr. Joanne Swarting, the principal at Inspiration Mountain, and Tate Bradley, the plant foreman at the home of the Knights. Actually, I uh, joined the military here in Phoenix in 1979. Joined the Navy. Okay. I went to boot camp in San Diego, and then I reported my first ship as a deck seaman. Obviously, so I, not in Arizona because yeah, no. not, not much was, water in I Arizona. I was actually in Long Beach. Okay, nice. And then uh, it was a brand new ship. I was part of the original crew, first crew. Which one? It was the uh, USS Duncan, FAG-10. Nice. And I served on there for almost three years, and I was sent to an, a technical school, became an operations specialist, and then I went on to another small destroyer in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, where I served for three years on the USS Benjamin Stoddard, left the Benjamin Stoddard and went to the USS Hull, H-O-E-L. Wow. Another Adams class destroyer out of San Diego. And then I did my first tour of Navy recruiting. That's a good story. How about you, Dr. Schwarting? What's your story? Well, um, I actually graduated high school a little early. I was 17 when I graduated, and I was on a delayed entry program. So I went um, into boot camp when I was 17. And the funny story is my mom had to sign over sure. uh, custody to the U.S. government <laughs> for a few months You're while I went through boot camp. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, then I was, my first duty station uh, for a couple of months was a little NAFAC in Coos Bay, Oregon. This was um, in the early 80s, 1983, so we were still kind of on the tail end of the Cold War. And this NAFAC monitored Russian traffic off the coast, so that was pretty cool. They found out they made a mistake in my orders and transferred me back up to Bangor, Washington, uh, where I did refit um, at, for Trident submarines. So I was an interior communications electrician, small voltage, um, low voltage, I should say. And um, yeah, we I when the submarines pulled in, we did a lot of work on their electronics. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. So obviously when your military career starts to wind down, what's going through your head as you're looking at options around in your community and then maybe... Um, what kind of process did you go through deciding to go into education? Actually, I, when I left the military, I retired as a chief petty officer. And I would found out during my leaving the military that enlisted can have two federal retirements. 
So I was looking for a federal job, which I did with the Postal Service. And then I retired from there. And everybody in the Postal Service was telling me, hey, go to a school district. They're hiring. They're hiring. So I live in Deer Valley School District. That's how I came about coming to Deer Valley. Okay. That makes sense. How about you when you were winding down? So I um, actually spent four years in the Navy. Um, Mine was an interesting story because I was trained specifically on steering diving panels, oxygen generators, so very specific submarine equipment. But when it came time for me to reenlist, they were going to put me on a ship in San Diego. And I didn't feel real comfortable as a E-5 at the time, Petty Officer Second Class, Um, whether I had that knowledge. So um, I had enough money um, to go to college now through the um, through the program uh, with the military. And so I came home and went to college. Yeah. Well, obviously there's uh, some blanks in there. Yeah. How'd you get into education? Well, um, interestingly enough, I went to college to become a lawyer. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Which works Uh, well for a principal. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. But uh, throughout that program, I met my husband and then had four children in five years. So I took a little hiatus there and um, got involved with the PTA at their school and thought, wow, this is way better than being a lawyer. And so I uh, changed, uh, changed it up a bit and, and got my education degree. Don't yeah. you think it's a little comical that both of you sitting here are in, from the Navy and we don't have a stitch of water around here? Exactly. Anywhere? We're in the desert. <laughs> We're or in the, the pine trees. Yeah. We're sand sailors. Yeah, sand that's sailors. right. Yeah, you like that solid ground. <laughs> What were, uh, once you got into public education, what were some of the similarities and differences between the military life and the public ed life? Similarities? I wouldn't say there's a whole lot between the military and, and what I do as a plant foreman for the school district. Um, well, your life is run by bells here. Right, probably. Yeah. That's probably similar. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that would be Maintenance. Yeah, we're always maintaining. Um, maintaining the campus, working with other people of different personalities. You have to be able to adjust yourself and how you approach them and stuff. So, and I learned a lot of that in the military. For sure. So, yeah, and then being stationed in different spots too, you had to adjust every time they moved you somewhere else. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and you've been in different Deer Valley spots, yes. Yes, this is my uh, third school. Okay, so you've had to adjust three times. Just like yes. we, we stationed you at Inspiration Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> that's my twilight tour. <laughs> <Stay> <laughs> <I'm tour>. <laughs> How about you? And you see any differences or similarities? Oh, lots of similarities. I think, um, you know, the military taught me some discipline, responsibility, um, attention to detail, obviously. Um, and those are all uh, skills that I bring with me in all my jobs. Um, I, I love what Tate said about uh, the people. You know, we in the military, it's such a diverse culture. And that helps you develop these people skills um, and understanding of diversity that we also bring um, with us as well. Yeah. What advice would we give, would you give to those who are thinking about joining the military as a high schooler? As a high schooler going in the military, I tell them to make sure that they had everything they wanted out of the military. Um, if they're going for like the GI Bill or the the Navy used to have the Navy College Fund. If that's what they're going for, make sure they utilize it after they're done. A lot of people join saying, well, I'm going to get this college money like Dr. Swarting is. And then they get out and they don't realize it. If you haven't started it within 12 months, you usually start losing it. Mm. So stay on top so of the programming. Use it as a stepping stone for what you want in life and mm-hmm. get that training. Mm-hmm. That's probably true of any job. Mm-hmm. Learn as you go and take different parts as you grow. Absolutely. How about you? What, uh, what yeah, be strategic. Um, make sure um, when you enlist that you are focusing on what you want to do as with that stepping stone. Um, I went in um, not knowing. I had to strike for my position um, because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was I was still pretty young. Uh, but I would recommend that you kind of have a good idea of what it is you want to do and if the military can offer that for you. Um, it's a great career choice. Mm-hmm. Um, retirement benefits after 20 years are phenomenal. And, um, yeah. What's, what, uh, who would you suggest for the kids to talk to if I'm 18 years old versus just obviously a military recruiter who's going to tell you all the cool stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, where would you go to find out the real stuff? I'd go online. Mm. Like um, the Navy has a, or something? The or? Navy has a really good online information 
okay. site. Okay. And so I'm sure the other branches do. I don't check those, but I have read through the Navy's, and it's pretty straightforward on the process and all that. But I'd that. also get talk to uh, the VFW, find some veterans, and, and talk to them, ask them what it's really about, mm-hmm. what it's really like. Or swing by Inspiration Mountain. Oh, yeah, right? Exactly. Here. We have our own. We have our own. <laughs> right here. I did recruit for the Navy for nine years, so. Yeah, yeah. Come yeah talk, you can't just feel down. Yeah. Guidance so. counselors, ROTCs, um, uh, a lot of our high schools, mo- I think all of our high schools have ROTC yes, programs. Yeah, ROTC programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I'll have counselors or can mm-hmm. point you to that for sure. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears, though. Um, as you know, we're always looking for staff members throughout Deer Valley. We have 4,000 employees. We're always looking for someone. So what advice could you give a current military veteran or a current uh, military member who wants to shift gears? Um, how could they do that, and why should they go into public ed? It's a great way to continue to service to the community. Because as a military member, you're serving our country. So I went on to the Postal Service. I still served our community, and now I work here. And I, to me, public service is an honorable job to do. Mm-hmm. For sure. How about you? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, that? yeah. Come on in and um, maybe first steps uh, volunteer, get your volunteer training, um, do crosswalking monitoring, uh, lunch monitors, those, all of those entry positions, you know, give you the opportunity to understand the culture of the campuses that you serve. Um, that's how we, we've, we've got a lot of our volunteers coming in and doing those two hour uh, positions and really enjoying being around um, students and being those role models that our kiddos need. We also, uh, using the same idea, they could actually substitute for those positions they didn't want to sign on the dotted line. Yes, we have both classified substitution positions and certified, so absolutely. Both of those work. And you get a chance to check it out before you, you know, try before you buy. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. All right, any other um, words of wisdom, obviously, as we approach in Veterans Day that you want to share with our community? Be thankful for your veterans. Mm -hmm. They, they deserve your respect. They really do. Nice. Yeah. How about yeah. you? Yeah, the same thing. I just, um, we, at Inspiration Mountain, we always, um, we have a assembly every Friday where we honor those in service. And, um, you know, it's important for our veterans to know how much we appreciate and, and honor them uh, for what they do and to instill that within our kids as well. From the rolling seas of the U.S. Navy to the wild blue yonder of the United States Air Force, we head over to the home of the Skyhawks. Deer Valley High School. Their two Air Force veterans lead the Deer Valley Air Force Junior ROTC Unit, Master Sergeant Danilia Stilchin and Major Von White. Together they bring decades of experience to the Deer Valley Air Force Junior ROTC program and decades of wisdom for students considering a military career as well as current military members looking for what's next when they retire from the military. I'm Master Sergeant Retired Danilia Stilchin. I did 20 years in the Air Force. Um, my family had a military background. My grandfather was a chief master sergeant in the Air Force. My dad was in the Navy. So the military was kind of the way to go for my family. So after I graduated from high school, went right in and, and did my 20 years. Um, and then I thought about what can I do to give back to my community? And that's how I ended up where I'm at today. 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 How about you? All right. And I'm a major retired Vaughn Whited. And... My parents and my family had no desire for me to go in the military. All they could think about was their boy's going to go to Vietnam and die. Mm. So that was never an interest. Uh, but one day, I was driving down the road, and I just, maybe I saw a billboard or something. I'm not sure what it was. And I decided to pull into a recruiter's office. And when I did, I talked to all four services, and it just happened to be the Air Force was something I'm more interested in. And, and I said, let me work on some airplanes, get greasy, and I sign up and I went. My parents weren't real happy. I think my mom cried for the first couple of years. <laughs> um, but I got in there. I really loved it. I uh, was enlisted first, and I worked on airplanes, F-15s first, and then some F-16s. I was stationed a lot of different places. Later in my career, I crossed over to the dark side, to the officer side, and uh, still stayed in kind of the aircraft business, did a lot of, uh, you know, uh, um, staff jobs and things like that, too, along the way. And then uh, eventually I retired out of davis Mothin out of Tucson, working rescue. And then, so that was 26 years. After that, I left, worked in the corporate world for a little while, and thought there's got to be more to life than just 
cash is king and going to business meetings and traveling and making money. And I thought, how can I give back? How can I use my experiences to hopefully help you know, other people make better decisions? And that's what led me to ROTC here at Deer Valley High School and helping our youth make better decisions. And that's kind of was my driving force. So. What? Uh, let's hit that then. Uh, what are the similarities and maybe differences between public education and the military? It, it's, it's very different because, you know, we sign a contract. So, you know, there are certain things that we have to do. I, I, I don't know. How would you... How would you rationale? Between public education and the military, I will tell you one thing that the military does offer, and that is your opportunities to go to college. Yes. And specifically in the Air Force, that's our background, is uh, for basic training, tech school, any trains you actually do get, you do get college credit. So they really promote education from the very, very beginning. They want you to get an education. They want you to excel. They're always trying to find a way for you to better yourself. And I think that's what we do here in the high schools as well, is we're always looking for how can we improve that kid, how can we make them better for real world when it slaps them in the face when they leave. So if they leave here, they're not only going to leave with the, the opportunities of learning and having their brain in the right mode when they get in the military, um, they're going to continue to push them down that road of education and bettering themselves. So. Along the same lines then, what lessons from the military that you learned that you're giving to these kids? Life skills, attention to detail, self-discipline, teamwork, something that's going to make them successful no matter what career path they choose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would agree with uh, Master Sergeant. That's, that's, that's definitely our focus is teaching these kids confidence and leadership and um, stick to grit, how to, uh, to work through the face of adversity and to... Uh, to be able to handle situations because life's not fair. It's difficult. And if they can uh, um, learn to uh, work through hard situations, that's that's what our focus is, is life skills. Building character, building depth of personality, um, and being ready for the world when it hits them. I, had a, I was talking to a kid. I was walking in, and he said, uh, uh, you folks changed his life, gave him perspective about what's important. And what I call purpose. Oh, and if a nice. kid doesn't have purpose, or an adult doesn't have purpose, they wander. They and, do. Uh, that's one of the uh, things that you teach here is purpose. That's right. Making a bigger difference with the world, uh, world around us. What advice would you give to a kid or um, a 20 something year old? We're going to have different people listening to this podcast um, about joining the military. What are the pluses of, of that? You mentioned education. What are some other things? I know when I was 18, and I wanted, you know, to to obviously, first and foremost, serve my country, but moving out, I had a guaranteed place to stay. I had guaranteed medical. I knew I was going to be fed, and I was going to, to be taught a learned skill, something that I could potentially use outside. So, so joining the military, if you don't know what you want to do, you have time to figure that out, and you have, um, the, um, not support, but the security of knowing that everything that I need is being provided. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point. Um, and especially with the price and the way things are happening in today's world is so expensive. So if, and it's hard to focus on your dreams and your goals and get into that self actualization stage where you can achieve things, if you're so worried about your survival state and, and uh, living at home or how are you gonna get ahead. So it's an opportunity to not only move out of an area and become your own person, but you have your your safety and your security, your, your food and your shelter and all that kind of stuff taken care of so that you can focus on achieving your dreams. And you get a skill and a paycheck along the way. I think that they teach you, um, they put people in hard, hard positions to take them outside their comfort zone and they, they, they put you in a position where you have to learn or you have to really excel. Uh, and, and it's not just if you don't, we're going to kick you out. They, they really will go to great lengths to help you through that situation. Uh, I, I, think they, I think they make you think that we will kick you out and send you to jail and your whole life is over if you don't pass this test. But they do that to scare you and to put the intimidation in you. But in reality, they're not. Right. They've got a lot of money and time investing. They want you to excel. Who rehabilitate, train. And they rehabilitate, they train. And they, they want you to reach your potential. They absolutely Correct. do. And... and um, 
the average workplace might not invest all that in you, and the military absolutely invests that in you, and they, they want to see you uh, become great. So I think it's a great opportunity for, for young people to join the military if that would be something that they want. And, and along with all that, it teaches them and gives them purpose to be part of something bigger than themselves, to love their country, and to invest in other people instead of just being selfish and working their way down a, a, a selfish road of mm-hmm. me, 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 Serving me. Instead, others. it's about service. And nice. I think that's huge mm-hmm. in this world. I think mm-hmm. you get ahead mm-hmm. by helping others. For sure. Let's uh, switch gears then to let's talk to the other military folks that maybe retired or thinking about winding down their military career. Why would uh, why would you recommend or how would you recommend or what would you say to those folks about uh, plugging into to kids into the uh, into the public sector and public education. I, I really do believe that you get so much out of reaching. Just if it's one student a year, you're getting through to them and you're seeing them reach their potential and and even excelling above that. If we helped mold that that student into a successful young adult, then we've done our job. That's I get satisfaction out of seeing their success. Absolutely, and to be a part of that is huge. I agree. I, I think uh, it really doesn't matter what Deer Valley or any school system would pay us. The paycheck happens, and it happens all the time. I mean, we get emails, texts, phone calls, kids stopping by of saying, thank you, you've helped change their life, you help us make a difference. So when um, I would talk to somebody who's retiring or leaving the military, I would say, sure, go into the corporate world, Get it out of your system, make whatever you think you have to make, but there'll be a day, and it'll happen probably fairly soon, where you will transition from your first 40 years of, I'm in this earning stage, I've got to make this mark in my world, to you're going to move into a different stage of where now I feel like I need to give back, I need to change this world. And this is a great place to change the world, because you're changing future leaders. And... um, I would say if you're not there yet, hold on, it's coming. <laughs> so even if it's not this career field you find, I would find some place to plug in to serve and use all this experience, all these things that you've gained all these years to help somebody else's life become better because it's coming. Nice. Service of others, that's why we are here. That's why Dear Valley is here. I want to thank you for your service as well. And uh, obviously plugging into our kids makes a huge difference. Um, Kids tell me all the time, so keep up the great work. You got it, sir. Finally, we go from the Air Force to the Marines, where one of the newest members of the Deer Valley School Board hails from. Paul Carver served in the Marines, in part because he was inspired by his father's service in the Armed Forces. And while Paul got to do some of the exciting things the Marine does all over the world, he also picked up many tips on how to work with systems and with others. Something that comes in handy for anyone working with a group of other people, such as a school board. My name is Paul Carver. I'm a current sitting member of the Deer Valley Unified School District Governing Board. Uh, I decided uh, in my senior year in high school that I wanted to serve my country. And I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my father, who would served in the Marine Corps. And so so I did as well. I I signed up for the Marine Corps and... uh, yeah, so that's how I got there. <laughs> I mean, did you learn anything while you were there? I, I, I learned a lot of things. I mean, besides my my military occupational skill, my MOS was heavy equipment mechanic, so I was a diesel mechanic uh, to start with, and I, I learned a lot of things. I learned that I'm capable of much more than I give myself credit for. I learned that pushing yourself farther than you think that you can go is is a good thing because you don't know what you're capable of, and and we're all amazing human beings in our own right and so you, to, to push that envelope and the other great thing that I learned while I was in the military is that our people are our greatest resource uh, and, and we need to treasure and value each and every one of them uh, to the utmost degree. Once you are started serving as a DVSD uh, board member what are some of the similar, similarities and differences between the military life and what you see, you've seen in uh, public ed? Well, something that I've been able to apply to a lot of aspects of my life that I learned in the military is the concept of chain of command and another idea called request mass. And, and chain of command uh, just means that you, you follow the proper steps when you're trying to address an issue or, or get to the proper source of a concern. 
uh, you don't start at the top. Uh, you start at the person that's just right above you. And then when you don't find the answer that you're looking for or understand the answer, then the process is called requesting mass. And you keep going up the ladder until you get to somebody where all sides can agree that the information that is being shared is understood. Because uh, you're not going to necessarily agree. And, and that's neither here nor there. But there's a process in the military by which, if you don't understand, you can keep asking for the next guy and the next guy and the next guy until you get to the top or until you understand whichever comes first. What would you say to, we're going to have youngsters listening to this podcast as well, what would you say to the youngsters that might be listening uh, about joining the military? What are some of the things you'll get um, as a kid about life? Spending time in the military is an amazing opportunity. Uh, You get to do things that you never would have imagined that you could have done. I mean, while I was in the military, I went rappelling. I went on some amazing hikes. You know, guaranteed you're carrying quite a bit of weight on your back. But uh, the, the experience that I got to go through, uh, the technology that you get to wrap your hands and your mind around, the things that you get to experience. I mean, I was in the Marine Corps, so we practiced blowing things up and shooting things a lot. So that was... That, that was <laughs> this is always fun. Yeah. But, I mean, there's other branches of the military that are more technologically uh, engaged, the Air Force and the Navy, uh, for example. And... There's things that you get to do. I got to fly in a helicopter, fire a machine gun out the side of a helicopter. I mean, who gets to do that? Uh, And just some of those things. I mean, I was attached to the combat engineers, and we would go out. uh, We went to Fort Huachuca one time, and they needed to get rid of an observation tower. And we had leftover ordnance, which is explosives, uh, that we needed to use. And so the combat engineers went over there, and we got to participate and see how that worked and, and and, uh, you know, there's just, those just aren't things that you're going to do if you just graduate school and, and start working a regular job. And plus, you get to travel the world and see some amazing things uh, that you otherwise normally probably wouldn't get to till you're 40 or 50 years old. So I, I would encourage everybody to uh, take that opportunity to be of service and to enjoy some amazing opportunities. Some of the training uh, that they offer is obviously world class. They You also have access to educational credits or college as well, GI Bill? You betcha. Um, So just going to boot camp for me was worth seven college credits. Uh, And every class that you take when you're in the military equates to some sort of college credit. And when you decide that you're going to go down the college path, or even in some cases uh, career technical trades, you can apply for your GI Bill and the government will help you pay for it. Uh, So it's a good way to You earn credits while you're going to work, while you're in the military for the different things that you're doing, and then you can supplement that, or rather, your education is supplemented by that, and then the cost is negligible. And obviously, the employer is looking for many of the traits that are found in the military, such as? You betcha. Um, Being able to lead, uh, being able to make a decision. It's not always about making the right decision, it's about making a decision. Uh, It's about being able to bring people together. Uh, to accomplish a common goal. The idea of respecting authority and the chain of command, being able to take the lead, take charge, or uh, follow if that is your role, uh, those are all things that a lot of folks don't just normally learn as they go through the steps of life. But when you join the military, uh, you understand how to follow orders, but you also understand the necessity of being able to step up and fill in the gap when there is one. There will also be people that are current military uh, participants, members, and maybe they're thinking about shifting gears into the public sector. What advice would you give to them about serving in the public school arena? You know, I have come across a lot of folks that have served in our nation's military and then come towards education, and they make amazing educators. Uh, The way that they can engage the children and motivate them Uh, to push themselves, uh, to accomplish greater tasks than they ever thought they could. The things that they learn in the military are able to help them adapt to the environment of education, even though they're not dealing with adults. I mean, for heaven's sake, some of us that join the military are barely adults um, when we start. But they're able to learn in the service of our country things that allow them to become great leaders and motivators when they enter the classroom. One last question. Um, As your Deer Valley board member, Mm -hmm. any application of military uh, training that you've had there that applies to that role that uh, is unique to Deer Valley? 
I think uh, critical thinking and problem solving skills, uh, discipline, understanding the chain of command, understanding that, I mean, my mindset when I'm on the board is that we have certain policies and procedures that we follow, and we're required to do so. I mean, you're required to do that in every facet of life, but because of my exposure through my military experience, I think that I can accept that and understand the proper way to challenge certain things when you have a question and then the improper way to challenge that. So uh, the the military really did give me what I believe is to be a unique skill set that allows me to uh, be a positive influence on the governing governing board and uh, helps me to be more analytical when it comes to understanding the processes and how I can best influence. All right. Thank you for your service for DVSD and the Marine Corps. Thanks. Appreciate the opportunity. And we appreciate the opportunity to learn more about the military service and post-military careers of Paul Carver, Von Wedded, Danilia Stilchin, Joanne Swarting, and Tate Bradley. They are just five of the dozens of DVUSD members who have served our country, and they are now serving our students in the district. And we couldn't be more thankful for their service. If you have a topic or guest you'd like to suggest for this podcast, visit dvsd.org slash soupscoop to make your suggestions. I'm Dr. Carter's Finch, and you now have the inside scoop on DVUSD with the Soup Scoop Podcast. <laughs>